His head and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his realm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. I see the divine hand of the resurrected Lord coming upon you today. Amen. Saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. If death could not hold him captive, death cannot hold you captive. If sin could not hold him captive, sin cannot hold you captive. If sickness could not hold him captive, then sickness cannot hold you captive. If lack and want could not hold them captive, lack and want cannot hold you captive. And he said with his mouth, because I live, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Lord, let me see you this morning. And because I live, Ye shall live also. That is a guarantee for the most of life. I see you enter that realm this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. Paul the Apostle was praying in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. And that's going to be our subject for today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus which also implies our own resurrection Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So in the four services today we'll be looking at the power of his resurrection Part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. And I know, as the Holy Ghost opens your understanding, you will enter into a new realm in your Christian adventure. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Having something to show that he did not die in vain. Lord, let me know the power of your resurrection. So we're talking about the power of his resurrection this morning, or the power of resurrection, part one, part two, and three and four. Now, in Ephesians chapter one, Paul was praying, and he said something here that shows how much insight he had, or how much insight he desired. Of this mystery he was praying in verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you Ephesians 1 17 the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he was praying for the Ephesian church 
that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who all who believe according to the working of his power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his right hand in the heavenly places. To know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. He means the power of resurrection that brought Jesus out of the grave. That there is so much in it that is able to set you also up in the heavenly places. Amen. Amen. I have broken this to four for this purpose. In the first service, we'll be looking at power over sin. What is it? Power over sin. It's one of the dimensions of the power of his resurrection. And I'm going to read Romans chapter 6, I'm beginning from verse 3. Romans chapter 6, I'm beginning from verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? I hope there is no one here who after he's born again has not been baptized in water. If, if, if you miss that, that, that can be very terrible. It's a requirement to walk in the newness of life. It's what? It's one way to fulfill all righteousness. That's one, one mystery that disarms the horror of sin. It's a mystery. You must be baptized. He said, everyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So your salvation is not complete until you are baptized in water. When this understanding came to me many years ago, when I witnessed to you and you gave your life to Christ, I take you to the water straight. In the night. 12 a.m., 1 a.m., because I know if Jesus comes in the morning, you might, not, you might miss the flight. So I grab them and take them there. As many of us as are baptized into Christ, are baptized into his death. Now look at it. I'd like you to listen because Paul is preaching this morning. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Resurrection. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, that no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12, let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the loss thereof. Neither yield ye your members as, a, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Come and say resurrection. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14 together, come on, let's read. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, After he rose from the dead, the subject of sin becomes a matter of choice. Sin lost his power over the sins. That's why he said, let not. So you have to choose what you want. That means sin has lost its control. You are now to determine what happens. If sin has not lost its control, it will be a wicked God to judge sinners. 
If sin has power over you and me, it will be wicked to cast you and me to hell because of sin. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal bodies. For sin shall no more have dominion over you. That the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought about power over sin for the saints. So you can walk in the newness of life if that is your choice. Sin has no more dominion over me. Come on. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is my choice that determines my end. Sin has lost its power over me because I am born of God. Because I am born of God. Now follow me through to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm beginning from verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? First Corinthians 15 verse 12 and 9 13. He said, but if, I th if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. 15. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised of Christ, whom he raised not of. If so be that the dead rise not. Verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ. But, but for if the, the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet where? So is rise, or is rising from the dead. Is your rising from the grave of sin. Because it's risen. You are also risen. That they also which are falling asleep in Christ. Then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Shout hallelujah. I'm no longer in my sins because Jesus is risen. Amen. So his resurrection is my guarantee for sanctification. No longer in my sins because he's risen. By reason of his resurrection, my sanctification is guaranteed. No longer in my sins. Sin has no more dominion over me. I have a choice on what way I want to live. I read this in chapter 15 also, starting from verse 43 or verse 54. So when the corruptible, corruptible have, shall have put, up, put on incorruption, and this matter shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up where? In victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, which giveth us present continuous things. Oh, death, where is thy sting? 
Oh, great! Where is that victory? He said, the sting of death is sin. And the power of the grave is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and say, I have victory. Through my Lord Jesus Christ. Over the horror of sin. Sin has no more dominion over me. Sin has no more dominion over me. Sin has no more dominion over me. In the name of Jesus. Please understand what I'm talking about this morning. That the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not just an historical fact. It is loaded with power for you to live a life of fulfillment, a life of triumph. And among the dimensions of that power is your certified victory over sin. So he could say, let not sin reign in your mortal bodies. You are now in charge. The devil does not have a final say as to how you live. Your lifestyle is now your choice. Christ has given you the power to choose by his death and resurrection on the cross. He disarmed principalities and powers so they can't control your lifestyle anymore. Come and say, help me, Lord. The truth is that it doesn't matter that habit. It can be stopped in the twinkling of an eye. Amen? Not in your power, but by plugging your life into that power. The power of his resurrection. This could not hold you down, it shall not hold me down. Sin could not hold you down, it shall not hold me down. Not in your strength, but in his strength. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So you can connect yourself to the resurrection power source. And that will establish a newness of life for you. Very important. Because behind all the woes of man is sin. Behind what? All the woes of man is what? Sin. Behind all the struggles of man is sin. I've told you, I said, when God is pleased, the best of heaven is released. Sin, you have no more power over me. You have no more power over me. Let's see the way he put it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul was writing, a man of great insight and revelation. 2 Thessalonians, please, chapter 2. And we read in verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So it's a matter of allowance. What you don't allow cannot find its way to where you are. It's that the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Sin does not have a final say. You have a final say. You have a final say. Don't forget it's not in your power. It is plugging yourself to the power of his resurrection. It's not in your strength. It's plugging yourself into the greatness of his power towards us who believe. Because it's no more in the grave. Sin has no power to shut you up in the grave. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. You will not be taken out of the way. Yeah. Even though Satan is called the man of sin, but hear what the word says. He said, and give no place to the devil. That means when he knocks at your door, you have a right to say, get lost. Get up there now. He said, give no place. 
That means you have the final say as to what happens in your environment. Give no place to the devil. Let me say this, therefore, with all authority, that the essence of his resurrection is to make you and me walk in the newness of life. Can I hear you say amen to that? Amen. To make you and me walk in the newness of life. Your greatest Christian testimony is the positive changes you have encountered. He carried my sins on his body. And he laid them to rest. So I can also rest from sin. Sin has no more dominion over your life. Amen. Can I hear you shout amen? amen? Let me hear you shout the loudest amen. amen. This is very important. This is very crucial. It will go a long way to establish your stand in your Christian faith. That sin has no more dominion over you. Now let's read in Ezekiel chapter 36 and see what happens. You know, we've been going through this great subject, making the most of life. I want to start to read from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be what? Clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27. Now these are prophetic. These are messianic prophecies. Now verse 28. It's 27. It says, and I will put my spirit within you. And cleanse and cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. I will put my spirit. A new heart will I give you. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you know when Jesus came, he said, Ye are clean by the word that I have spoken to you. Is that in your Bible? In John chapter 15 and verse 3 or no, 3 or 5. I will, he said, Ye are clean by the words that I have spoken to you. I will sprinkle clean water on you. A new heart also will I give you. That's why we talk about the born again experience. A regenerated spirit. By believing Jesus Christ you have a new, you become a new man. Your old man gave way. The new man came alive. And I will put my spirit upon you. And I love the way Romans put it. He said, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you he said, the spirit that raised him from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. He will also quicken. He will make your mortal body to come alive to God. I will put my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my status. And keep my commandments and do them. And the Bible said, if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. He said, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we quicken your mortal body by his spirit. We dwells in you. So the power of his resurrection is able to quicken your mortal body so it can be delivered from sin. I command the release of that spirit, that resurrection spirit, into everyone in this great assembly this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit. To live a sanctified life requires the help of the spirit. And we are told specifically that there's a spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And that resurrection spirit is able to quicken your mother body to enjoy and walk in sanctification. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. It's not just an historical fact. It is the hold of man's destiny. The power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Now let's see where it ends. He said, when that happens, verse 33, Thou see the Lord in that day, that is Ezekiel 36 and now verse 33, that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. I see God doing that right here today. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities. And the ways shall be built God will bring you out of the corners to the limelight. Yeah. Now look at verse 34. And the desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of... A change has come your way at last. He said, it shall come to pass if you give the spirit the place to do his work of sanctification that I will bring you out of the corners into the cities. He said, and all the wasted areas of your life shall be reconstructed. He said, and then your land that was once despised shall become the envy of your generation. He said, your desolate life shall become like the garden of Eden. Look at that. And the waste and desolate and ruined city shall be, shall be fenced, shall become fenced and are inhabited. Then the hidden that are left round about shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. So to make the most of life, you must live the overcomer's life. Sin must be under your feet or you won't stop to stink. You must overcome sin before you can shine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So the power that raised Christ from the dead is able to quicken your mortal body by his spirit which dwells in you. I'd like you to lift up your right hand. Spirit of the living God. The one that raised Jesus from the dead. Come alive in me today and quicken my mortal body. I can't afford to live in the wilderness place of the earth. I want to experience my own Eden. The place of fulfillment. The place of abundance. Spirit of the living God. Come into me today. And quicken my mortal body. Amen. 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 I'd like you to be excited. Because it is very clear that because he rose from the dead, you can rise from any deadly habit. Because he rose from the dead, you can live the sanctified life. Because he rose from the dead, you can make it straight to heaven without hindrances. Because he rose from the dead, you can be free from the judgment that is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please know that the choice is yours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Satan is not to blame for your lifestyle. It is your choice. He said, and give no place to the devil. You have a right to admit a tenant to your house or to refuse him. No tenant can force him to your apartment. Hello, can I have an apartment here? No. You look at him and say, no. Not that the place is not free, but you don't want him. He doesn't look like somebody you want in that place. Maybe the man came without any dress on, just one singlet like that, and it looks like somebody just coming out from the psychiatric hospital. I mean, uh, so he, you see something in his house, you are not in his house, whether it is marijuana or something, you don't know. He says, excuse me, can I have an apartment here? He said, no, no, no. He said, see, not free, it's free, but not for you. You send him back you can send sin packing from your life. Yeah. All you need to do is to say no. He said, resist the devil. And what, what does he say? And he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It is now your choice. He's waiting for your choice. But let me say this to you. You'll never find your way back to Eden until the same question is settled. It was sin that sent man out. It will take righteousness to bring you back. 
the place of comfort and fulfillment on earth for a believer requires that you say bye-bye to sin. Bye-bye to sin or the struggle continues. The reason why many of us fail is because we have trusted in our own might, in our own power, and woe unto him that trusts a man and made the arm of his own flesh his strength. He will keep on struggling, he will overcome. But thank God for the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. I learned what, what the word of God said. He said, there is now no condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. The law of the spirit of life. So that resurrection power is called the spirit of what? Life. When it has its own place, then you are free from the law of sin and of death. Come and say, I'm free this morning. I'd like you to target one area of struggles in your life. Just where you are seated. One area of struggle which has stayed with you for a long time. And you've been wriggling under it. You want to be free. You've tried your best to be free. But this morning you can tap into the power of the spirit of life. You can, you can plug yourself into that resurrection fountain. And say, if he rose from the dead, then I'm no longer in my sins. He said, if he didn't rise, then we are yet in our sins. But hallelujah, he rose. So I'm no longer in my sins. I'm no longer in my sins. When they come to look for you next time, they won't find you there. When they come to seek you there, they won't find you there anymore. For why seek you the living among the dead? You will no more be found among the dead. Can I hear you shout a living amen? You will no longer be found among the dead. Yeah. I've seen young believers here walk out of drug addiction. So what is an old Christian doing with lying? He's here to make his choice. That's why he is being oppressed by the devil. I've seen people who live all their life under terrible addictions and one day just walk free into liberty. So I can't tell what an old Christian is doing with stealing, with unfaithfulness, with adultery. I can't say it. He's here to make his choice, so he remains a victim. But I see you make your choice this morning. Yeah. Spirit of life, take over. Can I hear you say that prayer to yourself? Yeah. Say it and mean it with your eyes closed before the Lord. Look at that challenge in your life and call that spirit again to take over. Spirit of life, take over. Can I hear you scream that in the spirit? Spirit of life, take over. I can't handle it by myself, but to have everything it takes to handle it. Spirit of life, take over. I see every struggle to please God in your life come to an end this morning. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. And I believe strongly he's talking about the spirit of resurrection, the spirit of life, the spirit of life. It sets free, free from the horrors of death and the traps of sin. The spirit of life, the spirit of life. We have dwelt on our own strength. That's why we have remained victims over the years. But hallelujah, we are connected today. Come and say, I'm connected today. I'm connected. I am connected today. Connected. Now look at it here and let's get what I'm talking about as we close. Chapter 8 of Romans. Hallelujah. The power of his resurrection guarantees our victory over sin. Guarantees our victory over sin. We can tap into it. There is therefore now no condemnation, verse 1, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, capital letter S, every time you see capital letter S, it's talking about the Holy Spirit in a particular dimension. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. <laughs> the law couldn't do it. Everybody knew the law, but everybody was breaking the law. Because the flesh couldn't handle the demands of the law. 
For God, the Bible said in verse 3, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, he said, if you walk after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. So how do you mortify the deeds of the flesh? Through the spirit. Come and say, through the spirit. It is through the spirit of life that you can destroy the deeds of the flesh. If you walk after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. Not through your struggles. Come and say, through, not through my struggles. But through the spirit. You can destroy. I can destroy the deeds of the flesh. The deeds of the flesh. The deeds of the flesh. How many said the law was weak? It couldn't handle it. But God sent his son, and that is it. We are free today. Come and say, I'm free. I'm free. Say loud, I'm free. I'm free. Louder yet, I'm free. I'm free. The loudest you can, I'm free. I'm free. And verse 11 of that chapter 8, he said, But if the Spirit, capital letter S, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You won't miss it anymore. So you can afford to rest on the operation of his spirit to live the sanctified life that you desire. It is through the spirit that we can mortify the deeds of the flesh. Come and say, I'm free at last. I am free at last. I'd like you to rise on your feet and call on the spirit of life to take over completely in your life. Would you like to call on that spirit right now? Amen. Spirit of life, take over. I'm, I'm tired of the struggles. <laughs> Spirit of life, the one that raised Jesus from the dead, take over today. Look at verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, what happens? Ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, through the Spirit, capital letter S, do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Is able to destroy the deeds of the flesh. To mortify means to send to the mortuary. That's simple for you to understand. To kill. To take out of existence. It's able to sanctify your flesh. And make you live the angelic life. Come and say spirit of life. I'm counting on your operation. I want to please God. The remaining days of my life. In my heart. In my, in my lifestyle, I want to please God. To please God. Every, deed of the flesh Every deed of the flesh that is standing on the path of my destiny, of spirit, of life, spirit of life, the one that raised Jesus from the dead, the take over now. Yes, Mortify the deeds of the flesh. I want to please my God. I want to please the Lord. I want to make it through to heaven. I want to make it through back home. So help me, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'm sure you understand what is happening this morning. Come and say, I'm free if you are. If you are, come and say, I'm free. So you can say the resurrection power is against you, thou foul devil. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is against you, thou deadly habit. I walk free from your entanglements. I walk free from your traps. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has set me free. And whosoever the Son of God shall set free shall be free indeed. I am free from you. You are going to walk in unusual liberty from henceforth. All of that chapter 8 is talking about the resurrection power. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And that has raised you today. From every lifestyle that is a concern to your life. 
you that used to fight and shout before, watch it. You will be as meek as a dove. Because the spirit of life is taken over. In the precious name of Jesus. There is something to learn about the power of his resurrection. It holds a place in your walk with God. Lord, I want to know that power of your resurrection. Open my understanding. I want to plug into that power. I want to make the most of my Christian life too. Pray that prayer in a moment. We have been examining that great subject, the power of his resurrection. And in the first service, we looked at one of those the dimensions of that power under that topic, power over sin. It was one of the things delivered by his resurrection. You can live a triumphant Christian life. You can live to please God in the many days of your life, not by power, not by might. Or by the operation of the spirit of life, the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's able to mortify the deeds of the flesh and make you live a life that pleases God. It can destroy pride, destroy arrogance, destroy filthiness, destroy lying, and everything that seems to corrupt your walk with God is able to destroy it. Hallelujah. He said, if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, say you shall live. So we can count on the spirit of life to live the sanctified life. It doesn't answer to struggles. You can't attain to it by struggles. It has to be by faith in the operation of the spirit of life. Amen. I see the struggles of the people of God coming to an end. Now, in this service, we'll be looking at power over Satan. Come and say, power over Satan. Uh, yes, and I think it will be wonderful because we are all people who have been made to believe that Satan is so powerful and that anything you want to do except Satan allows you. You will not be able to do it because everybody has come to believe that it's a very powerful Satan and is still in charge. He does whatever he pleases. But that's not the truth. I said, that's not the truth. His power was destroyed someday. And we're going to look at that just in a moment. Power over Satan. I'd like you to know this morning that because Jesus died and rose again, Satan has no final say in your life. Can I hear you shout a believe in amen? I said Satan has no final say in your life. Satan has no final say in your life. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Now let's begin our journey. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning from verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love we are with, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace he has saved. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When he rose, we were raised together with him. This is the end.